With the word of God in his hands, every human being, wherever his lot in life may be cast, may have such companionship as he shall choose. In its pages, he may hold converse with the noblest and best of the human race, and may listen to the words of the eternal or the voice of the eternal as he speaks with men, as he studies and meditates upon the themes into which the angels desire to look, he may have their companionship. He may follow the steps of the heavenly teacher and listen to his words as when he taught on mountain and plain and sea. He may dwell in this world in the atmosphere of heaven, imparting to earth's sorrowing and tempted ones thoughts of hope and longings for holiness himself coming closer and still closer into fellowship with the unseen like him of old that walked with god drawing nearer and nearer the threshold of the eternal world until the portal shall open and he shall enter there he will find himself no stranger the voices that will greet him are the voices of the holy ones, voices who unseen were on earth his companions, voices that here he learned to distinguish and to love. He who through the word of God has lived in fellowship with heaven will find himself at home in heaven's companionship. Education, page 127, paragraph one. And all she is saying, through the word of God, we can actually live in the companionship of beings who actually live in heaven by constantly being in the word of God. And that applies to young and old and those in between. God is good and all the time. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to everyone connecting via the internet, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. However you are in contact with this service, thank you very much. And may the Lord bless you super abundantly. Thanks again for coming back, my friends in this building. I realize, as I said last night, Friday services should not be long because you've had a hard day and the sun has set. But Saturday services at night shouldn't be long either because, you know, Adventists tend to have two Sabbaths, the seventh day, and then we rest from the seventh day on Sunday because we have so much to do. And so tonight's message will not be long, but it will just be long enough. Is that okay? All right. I wish I knew where our online audience members are from, but wherever you are, I know there are many from Kenya because this church is essentially a Kenyan church. So all the Kenyans, Wapendwa, Mungu, Awabariki, Sana, 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 and any other country and language, may the Lord bless you. I really, really mean that. Let me thank God again for the honor and the privilege of being the one who breaks to you the bread of life. It is a tremendous honor and a heavy burden because I do not want to speak error at all. You know, sometimes I speak to God and I say, Father, I prefer to die than deliberately preach error. I prefer, I tell him that, I prefer to die than tell people Sunday is the Sabbath. I prefer to die than tell people there's no Holy Ghost. I prefer to die, literally, than to tell people that Jesus is less than God. I really prefer to die than to tell people this is not the word of God. It is just any other document. I prefer to die. And I tell God that. So tonight as I stand before you, I will do everything in my limited power, assisted by the unlimited power of God, to present to you, thus saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. Is there anyone among us who is not a Seventh-day Adventist? May I see your hand? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist, and I will ask that with great determination all during the week until I see at least one hand. I believe there are those online who are not Seventh-day Adventists. If you are one, thank you very much for joining us and connecting with us, and may the Lord truly place his hand of mercy and abundance upon your life and never remove it. All right, our subject for this evening is best friends forever. What did I say? A few years ago, this uh, expression came into being BFF. What's BFF? Best friend forever. It's not in the Bible, but it's the biblical concept. And so this evening, our subject is best friend forever. 
Before I begin, I ask you as I usually do, please maintain reverence in the house of God. And I also make that appeal to those watching us online, preserve reverence. God is God regardless of where he is. In the desert, in the burning bush, he was God. In the temple, he is God. On Zoom, he is God. On Facebook, he is God. God does not change. And so you're worshiping the God of heaven and earth. Preserve reverence wherever you are and make sure these things are turned off. I believe mine is. Favor number two, pray for me while I'm speaking. And simply say to God, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth and say it and mean it. And God will answer you because God wants his words spoken, not mine. And so simply say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. And it's based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And favor number three, think as you listen. Isaiah 1.18, come now, let us do what? Reason together. Come on, says God, let's discuss this. Think as you listen. Let's pray. Our Father, you are a good God. Not only because people say that, but because you really are in our lives and we are witnesses of your goodness. As we bow in your sacred, holy presence, Father, give us a consciousness of who you are and let that affect our behavior. Because we're worshiping a holy God, we ask you quickly, dear God, forgive us if we have sinned against you. Remove our sins and cover us anew with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Father, we commit this service to your glory and your glory first, and secondly, to the blessing of those who listen. I humble myself before you, dear God, and I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, Put your words in my mouth. Give me the mind of Christ. Give me the attitude of Christ. Give me the humility of Christ that the message may have its effect. Bless everyone listening to God. Make my words clear and simple to them that the truth may triumph. And for those listening to God who may be sick, particularly with COVID-19, please, Father, heal them. Heal them 100% day God. Restore them to health. Because you're God of health, not a God of disease. So be merciful, Father, to them. And for those listening to God who are not Adventists, grant them a special blessing. We thank you for their presence with us. Now, dear God, use me as you see fit. In Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say amen and amen. Go with me to John chapter 15. What does that clock say? I don't see it clearly. What time is it? Seven what? 7.20. All right. I'll release you by eight. What book did I say? What chapter? 15. Reading from verse 12. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. John 15. Reading from verse 12. And I'm glad to see my two sisters, my little sisters, sitting right here. Were you here this morning? Yes. I want to see you every night. It's encouraging to see you with the Bible in your hands and the rest of you. John 15, reading from verse 12. This is my commandment that ye do what? How? As I have loved you. Now, let's dissect that verse. The Bible is simple. This is my commandment. Who is speaking? Jesus Christ. Is he equal with the Father, yes or no? Yes. So essentially, who is speaking? God. God says, this is my commandment, not a suggestion. My commandment. Now, commandments do not require feeling. You know, some church members don't feel like loving other church members. The Bible does not require you to feel anything. It requires us to obey. When the Bible says thou shalt not kill, it has nothing to do with your feeling. Don't kill. Somebody say amen. And so this is my commandment that ye love one another. How? As I have loved you. Who is I? Jesus, who is God. So we have a divine standard. 
for human beings. I didn't say that clearly. Jesus tells us, love one another. And you may ask, how? The way Jonathan loved David? No, that's not high enough. The way Abraham loved Sarah? That's not high enough. The way I love, says God. That's how you must love. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I say again, God requires, God gives to human beings divine standards. I didn't say God requires human beings to be divine. We cannot be divine. That's God alone. But he gives us divine standards. Love one another the way I loved you. Now, let's go to verse 13 of John 15, our subject, best friends forever. Read with me. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Stop. The Bible is very clear. The greatest expression of love is self-sacrifice. Greater love hath no man than this, now, the person speaking is Jesus Christ, and he was qualified to make that statement because he came to give a practical demonstration of that love. Because if you look at John 15, it's almost all, well, it's all red letters. You look at John 14, it's almost all red letters. Look at John 13, most of it red letters. Look at John 16, most of it red letters. Look at John 17, almost all of it red letters. Why? It's one long speech from Jesus, and in John 18, Christ is in the Garden of Gethsemane, which means these are the words of Christ just before he's crucified. And he says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. At a certain age in our lives, friends are very important to us. You know, sometimes when a family decides to move, the biggest problem they have is the children. Because the children do not want to leave what? Their friends. Friends mean much to them. Friends help them to identify who they are. Friends allow them to decide where they belong. Friends are absolutely important, and God is the originator of friendship. Of course, the wrong friends can take you this way. And so Jesus says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, read verse 14. Ye are my friends. Come on. If ye do, come on. Whatsoever I command you, stop. What is the price of privilege? Come on. You were here this morning. What's the price of privilege? Obedience. What's the price of friendship with God? obedience if you listen to me long enough you'll realize my favorite word in all the bible is obey i'm not saying i do it well i didn't say that i said my favorite word in the bible is obey listen to jesus ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever i command you Turn that over. Ye are my enemies. Finish my words. When ye disobey me. So there are a lot of people in church who are the enemies of Christ. But singing hymns and the whole church office. The enemies of God. Because of disobedience. I'm not trying to depress you. I'm just trying to speak biblically. The Bible is a black and white book. That's not a racial statement. He that is not with me is against me. You're either a sheep, come on, or a goat. You're either wheat, you either go to heaven, you either saved or mm -hmm, it's black and white. You either serve God or you serve the devil. In the Garden of Eden, God said, Thou shalt surely die. The devil said, he shall not surely die. Two voices of authority. That hasn't changed from then till now. Ye are my friends 
if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now what's our subject? Best friends forever. Now why did I choose that subject? Let's go to John 14. John 14, we'll read from verse 1. Our subject, best friends forever. What a privilege to be God's friend forever. The devil hates that. The devil, by the way, does not have friends. He just has people whom he deceives. The devil has no friends. Not even his evil angels are his friends. He has no friends. God has friends. How many of you are friends of God? Can I see your hand? Ah, uh, God bless you. I mean that genuine. God bless you. Don't break that friendship. What book did I say? John. What chapter? 14. Reading from what verse? 1. Now, look up. Look at me. Look up. Start reciting John 14 from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Ah, I'm happy. <laughs> I really am. God bless you. Teach your children the word of God. Let them hide the word of God in their minds to undo the damage of social media. Are you with me? The word of God is like Clorox. You apply it to your mind. It removes the stains of this world, but apply it consistently. Now, let's review that passage again. You may look if you so choose. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God? believe also in me. You, you see, there must be both. There are some people who believe in God but have no time for Jesus. Mm -mm. You've got to believe in both. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus tells us what we need to know. Ah, you missed that. Let me say it again. God tells us what we need to know. So he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. If I wanted you to eat pork, I would have told you. If I wanted you to get drunk every Saturday night, I would have told you. If I wanted you to keep Sunday as a Sabbath, I would have told you. God tells us what we need to know. Somebody say amen for God. If it were not so, I would have told you. Keep reading. I go to prepare a place for you. God, Jesus didn't send someone to do it. I am going to do it because he's working on behalf of his friends. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now, look at that. He said, I go, and one day I will come again, which means Christ is not on the earth. But where are his friends? On the earth. But where is Christ? In heaven. This is the Bible, not me. I go to prepare a place. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again. And do what? Receive you unto myself, which means that in a certain sense, we have not yet been received unto Jesus. I said in a certain sense. Are we friends of Christ? Yes. Is he our savior also? Yes. But he's not with us personally. And Christ is not satisfied with just a spiritual relationship. He wants to be with us flesh and blood. Can you with me? He wants to be able to reach out and touch us, and we reach out and touch him. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. When the, when the, uh, the shepherd found a lost sheep, didn't he call all his neighbors? 
Where did he place the sheep? On his shoulder, in physical contact, and took it home. Called all his neighbors, and that will happen when we and Christ meet finally in the, new, in the heavens above. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be. That's future, which means we are not yet where Christ is. By faith, but not by physical experience. We're not. Moses is. Who else is there? Elijah is. Who else? Enoch. Who else? Many others. But, because when Christ rose, he took people with him. We are not. And Christ is not satisfied. He has to come back now. But while he is gone. Let's go to verse 16 of John 14. Our subject, best friend forever. Let me pray again. Father, as I continue to speak to those whom you love in this building and online, give me simple language, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you how long? Forever. Now, who is this comforter? Listen to the words again. Read microscopically. And I will pray the Father. How many people are referred to in that expression? Come on. How many people? Two. I, says Jesus, praying to somebody. He's not praying to himself. I will pray to my Father. And then the Father will do what? He will give you another comforter. So how many people do we have? Three. I realize there's a movement in the Adventist church, not official, not official, but there's a movement to discredit the presence and the reality of the Holy Spirit. Avoid that movement like the plague. Let me tell you why. Go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. We read from verse 31. I want to give you a biblical reason why you should be very, very careful what you say about the Holy Ghost. And I hope you're listening. Matthew 12, reading from verse 31. If you have it, say amen. You may read with me if you have my version. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, unto people. Keep reading. But the blasphemy against the Holy shall not be forgiven unto men. Verse 32. And whosoever speaketh, come on, a word against the Son of, who is that? Jesus. It shall be forgiven him. Finish that verse now. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You've got to be careful what you say about the Holy Ghost. But it's also very clear in those two verses, there are two beings. You can blaspheme against Jesus. There's forgiveness. You blaspheme the Holy Ghost. There's no forgiveness. Two beings. And there's some people who say the Holy Ghost is just Jesus in another form. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There are two different beings. Are you following me? And so we go back now to John 14, verse 16. Welcome those of you coming in. Come on in, come on in. There are empty seats all over. You're back at John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because they seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye see him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be where? In you. Finish verse 18 now. I will not come on. Leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Wait a minute. What did Jesus say in verse 1? And verse 2, that, that passage. I'm going. I'm going. But he says in verse 18, I'll come to you. How? Listen to verse 16 again. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you what? 
Ah, look at that word, another. If you say another, you automatically mean there's a previous one. Am I right? Yes or no? If I were to say to you, bring me another banana, what does that tell you? I had one already. Mm -hmm. Bring me another Ndizi. I had one. So Jesus says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another. There must be two. Because if the Holy Ghost is Jesus, you can't say another. So there must be two beings. I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter now. The Greek word for another means another of the same kind. There's another Greek word for another which means another of a different kind. But the word used in John 14, 16 is another of the same kind, meaning a comforter just like me. So when you have him, you practically have me. You see, the Holy Ghost is not flesh and blood. Go to Luke 24. Luke 24. Uh, most preachers will tell you when they start preaching, they have to resist the urge to uh, preach several sermons in one. And that's what I'm struggling with now to keep it narrow. But let's go to Luke 24. Let's read from verse 36. Luke was that medical doctor who made time for Jesus. Do not let your profession draw you away from God. I don't care how busy you say you are, make time for God. Somebody say amen, please. Luke was a doctor. He had time for God. He wrote two books of the Bible. He wrote the book of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them what? Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, What? Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. What does Jesus show them? His hands and his feet. What is he going to say? Handle me and see. Now, finish that verse. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Question for you, anatomy. Does the spirit have flesh and bones? No. But is the spirit an intelligent being? Yes. As human beings, we only understand three dimensions. You understand? We understand flesh and we don't understand how you can exist without having flesh and bones. But Jesus said, the spirit hath not flesh and bones. Now... But does Jesus have flesh and bones? He said, yes, as ye see me have. Now, this is after the resurrection. Does Jesus have flesh and bones now? Yes. So he cannot be in us physically. But the spirit has no flesh and bones. I don't profess to know everything about the Spirit or the Son or the Father. Those are divine beings. They are inexhaustible in uh, the, the knowledge of them. But the Bible gives us some evidence which is reliable. Jesus Christ is now flesh and bones. He still has it. Because Paul said, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. He calls him a man 20 years after he went up. And so Jesus is still physical, but the Holy Spirit is not. But since the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus, Jesus said, I will send him, and through him, that's how I'll come to you. Now, let's go back to verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you how long? Forever. Now, if he is just like me, says Jesus, and I am your friend, what is the Holy Spirit to you? Your friend. He will abide with you for how long? Forever. So what is he? Best friend, come on. Forever. Your BFF, finish my words, is the Holy Spirit. Not Paris Hilton. Your best friend, your BFF, 
It's the Spirit of God who represents Christ. Now, here is what he'll do for you. Go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah 30. And we read verse 21. Isaiah 30, reading verse 21. We're in the Old Testament. Isaiah is called the gospel prophet. He speaks so much about Christ. By the way, read Isaiah 53, memorize it. Elamite says that chapter will humble you as you study it, read it. Isaiah 53, to understand our mission, read Isaiah 58. Isaiah 30, verse 21, let me pray, Father, as I continue speaking to your beloved people, speak to me that I may speak to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Read for me. And thine ears shall hear a voice behind thee saying what? This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Now. And thine ears shall hear a voice. It is through the Spirit of God that God speaks with us. That's why he told those before the flood, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That voice that tells you that's wrong, that's the spirit of God. That's your BFF. Now notice the words, and thine ears shall hear a voice behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand or when ye turn to the left. When you are about to drift from the right path, the spirit of God, your BFF, will tell you don't do that. Now, your earthly best friends may tell you, drift to the right. Let's go smoke. Let's go to the club. Let's do this. Let's drift in a, in a semi-nude way. Your earthly friends may tell you that. Your heavenly BFF will tell you, this is the way. Let's see a man that the Spirit did that for. Go to 2 Kings 22, quickly. 2 Kings 22, we read verses 1 and 2, our subject best friend forever and we know that's jesus represented by the holy spirit do you have second kings chapter 22 not yet i'll wait five seconds you have it now reading from verse one if you have my version you may read with me what does that book that verse say Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. Next verse. And he did what? That which was right, come on, in the sight of the Lord. Stop. Many of us, we try to do what is right in the sight of our friends, to please them. Josiah did what was right, in the sight of the Lord. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of David his father. Now David was not his immediate father, but he was a descendant and spiritually he was one with David. We are sons of Adam, physically, and sons of God spiritually. He walked in all the ways of David his father, finish that verse, and turn not to the right hand or to the left. So when you don't turn to the right or to the left, you stay on that path of right doing. And what's the voice that tells you? The Spirit of God who we have discovered is our best friend forever. And he does that for you regardless of your age. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. You have a friend most of the world does not have. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Mm -hmm. For he dwelleth, come on, he dwelleth, and shall be, look at the verse, he dwelleth, no, no, he dwelleth, he dwelleth what? Is it in you first or with you first? He dwelleth and shall be. Now, what does it mean he dwelleth in you? Did Jesus dwell in the disciples? No. Was he their best friend? Yes. He was with them. He did not dwell in them. 
but the representative of Jesus Christ who is just like Jesus, he will be even closer. He will dwell in us. The disciples had Jesus with them. We'll have Jesus with us and in us. For how long? Forever. What's our subject? Best friend forever. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He does that through the Holy Spirit. My friends, young and old and in between, Christ offers to you friendship. Friendship. We are born to appreciate friendship. It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. It does not mean it is not good to be single. It means it is not good to be lonely and alone and isolated. God has arranged in our very creation that we'll appreciate friendship. And God is so gracious. God says, I want to be your personal friend. Now go to James chapter 2 and see that in the life of our father, our earthly father spiritually speaking. James chapter 2, we'll read from verse 21. Are you there? James 2, 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works with faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was what? Imputed unto him for righteousness? Finish the verse. And he was called, come on, the friend of God. The same God who walked on the earth was the friend of Abraham. He was called. He did not call himself. God called him my friend. But what do we love to do with our friends? Hang out. Whoever said that blessings upon you. Hang out together. To such a degree we fight our parents so that we may hang out with our friends. Let's fight the world so we can hang out with Jesus. Are you following me? Best friend forever. And he will tell you, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's your BFF, Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want you to either establish or re-establish a friendship with whom? Jesus Christ, who is your BFF forever. But how does Christ dwell in you and me? Through the Holy Spirit who represents Christ with 100% accuracy. To have the Spirit is to have Jesus. And so your best friend forever is Christ. He is in heaven physically, but in us through the Spirit of God. What a beautiful arrangement. That the one who said, let there be light, is your best friend. This is no joke. The one who sent the flood to destroy the sinners is your best friend. The one who brought manna from heaven when an entire nation was hungry is your best friend. The one who saw a hungry nation and he told Moses, smite that rock. Moses smote the rock and the waters gushed out and he gave water to an entire nation in an instant. He is your best friend. The one who stood at Lazarus' tomb, John eleven forty three, 43, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He's the one who has the power to reverse death. He is your best friend. And the one of whom the Bible says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That man whose voice will raise all the righteous from Abel until whenever, he is your best friend. It's never he who lives us. It is always us who leave him. Let me close the message. Is Christ your BFF? Don't answer me. You have to decide that in your heart. Is Jesus Christ? When you have crisis, is your first urge to call the pastor or to call an elder? Or to call your colleague on the job. And your best friend sits on the throne in heaven. 
waiting for you to call him. And you don't have to call very loud because through the spirit, where is he? In you. So you speak softly. No need to shout. You know, I go to airports and there's a, a quiet room. Once you enter that room, you can't talk, you can't use your phone. It's a quiet room, but you can talk to God. Because you don't need words. Are you following me? Or you don't need to use your voice. You can talk to God. Your best friend forever. When your children are giving you more gray hairs than you need, you talk to your best friend. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. When the school or the university is giving you a difficult time with Sabbath exams and you want it changed, you go to Jesus who changed Nebuchadnezzar's word and delivered the three Hebrew boys from the fire. The Bible says he changed the king's word. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said. You tell your best friend, change the school's word. Christ is a resource that makes all other resources unnecessary. Let me change my words. Beside Christ, there is no resource. Tonight, I recommit myself to staying close to my best friend forever. Who is that? Jesus. How many of you will say, Father, help me to stay close to my best friend for Ah, uh, look at the hair. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. And when the sun sets tonight, it's already set. I think it sets at 6, 7, 44. What does that clock say? All right, it is already set. So the holy day is gone, but the friendship of Jesus does not have a sunset. Are you with me? The sun of his love still shines in the heaven. It does not set. And so tonight, the sun has set. The holy day is past, but Christ is still your BFF. The sun has set. The holy day is past, but you and I are still required to be holy people. Before I pray, who is your BFF? You took too long to answer. Who is your BFF? Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father in heaven, we thank you for Christ, Jesus. He has flesh and bones as we have. He does not look like an angel. He looks like a human being. What an honor for us that he has taken our likeness right into the Godhead. And so our BFF sits on the right hand of the Father. And through faith in him, we are there. And through faith in him, he is with us through the Spirit. What a privilege, Father. Through faith in Christ, we're on your right hand. Through faith in Christ, he's in us through the Spirit. Help us, dear God, to listen to our BFF. As he says through the Spirit, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And give us the humility to choose that way and to listen to that voice. Now, dear God, bless every man, woman, boy, and girl in the building and online. Bring us back tomorrow, Father, to hear your word again. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for friendship with the Creator. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good night with your BFF.